Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Fix. I'm here to give you a quick video, quick start guide on the Avid SC48. So here we are with the Avid SC48. Let's jump right into the menu systems here and show you around what is in there. The first and most important menu is the input menu, which gives you a basic overlay of an, whatever channel is selected. The second menu is the output menu, which again goes to any output that you are actually selected on. The third menu here is filing. There's two levels to save things and load things off of on this console. There's a show file and then there's snapshots. A show file loads and stores every single thing on the console where snapshots are selectable. We'll get into that a little bit later. So you've got your load, save, your transfer, which is used with, you have a USB stick in here. So you see these files on the right are on a USB stick. You can transfer them, sync it, etc., back and forth. And this is a very handy little hidden feature of the SC48 is the history in here. If for unforeseeable reason you've lost everything, you can go back. It automatically saves itself every 10 minutes or so. You can just figure out when you were in time and go back to that time, which has saved me personally more than once. The next tab on the menus here is snapshots, which is where you can store whatever you have selected over here on the right. You can go to none. You can select just the fader, EQ, dynamics, all the way to everything that it will store in your snapshots. The next menu item here is your patch bay, which is where you select what physical inputs on the back of the console are going to which channels. You can also select what Pro Tools channels. You can connect this console via FireWire to a Pro Tools enabled computer and record up to 32 tracks directly to Pro Tools. You have the same routing for your outputs to assign physical outputs on the back of the console to whichever outputs you're going to. The same routing applies here for direct outputs from each input channel here on the left. And then inserts, which you don't use a whole, whole lot in digital domain anymore. The next tab in the menus is your plugins, which gives you a visual representation of a rack full of different plugins all loaded here. And then your options menu, which has a bunch of sub menus. So the first one here is your system, shows you exactly what's going on DSP wise and configuration wise of the whole console. Then you have buses where you can assign pre, post, EQ, mute, fader, etc. Your level trims for monitoring, your matrixes for linking them. And then we have pickoffs, which is going to select pre or post fader for your auxes, groups, left, right, mono, send. One of the most powerful features of this console with using plugins, and you get inherent latency with plugins, is this delay compensation here, where it, the console will automatically clock everything to the right clocking to account for any latency that plugins may introduce. And you have your snapshot tab within options, which just gives you basic preferences with your snapshots. And one that gets used a whole lot is miscellaneous, where there's an oscillator, your two track levels, your system clock, your talkback settings, any delay settings, whether you want them in milliseconds, feet, meters, or samples, and your tap tempo, whether you want that in beats per minute or milliseconds as well as your mouse settings. The next tab is interaction, pretty self-explanatory. Your console lights, your LED displays. Devices gives you a overview of the entire console's DSP usage. So here it shows you that all sections of the console are working properly on the left. And on the right here, it gives you a breakdown of what DSP is doing what exactly? Your next tab is plugins, shows plugins that are installed here on the right and plugins available to install on the left. 
And the last one here is events, where you can set up foot switches, different switches on the console to do things such as tap delays.